Hello folks, welcome back for an update on the Red Sea Reefer 750 XXL. I thought I'd just do an upload just to bring you guys up to speed with what's been going on and what's going to be going on. Uh, I've got two new additions going in at the weekend. Uh, they've been in quarantine at All Things Aquatic, Hawkehurst for some time now. So they'll be ready to go in at the weekend, hopefully. Um, yeah, all going good. The new addition, the Clown Trigger, which I've named Pennywise, uh, which I think is quite a fitting name for him. Uh, yeah, all, all fine, no aggression. Um, touch wood, he seems to be quite well behaved and getting on with the other fish fine. So yeah, that's all good. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little quick sh um, show around the tank and show you the sump. Um, there's something I've done with the sump, which I think a lot of you guys with reefers will be quite interested um, in doing maybe. Um, so yeah, get the camera off the tripod and give you a little show around. Jaws is uh, behaving himself. Hasn't jumped out again. Thank God. I don't think he's going to. I think it was just a freak one-off thing. He, n he now doesn't swim up and down in this corner uh, so much. He used to swim up and down really fast. And of course, that's he got well excited that time. And it's just a one-off. He, he came out, hopefully. Um, I don't want to have to put a lid on the tank because I just, just don't like the look of them. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to be okay. Always hungry. Okay, let's have a look. I'll show you down in the sump. So, the main issue I've I've had with the uh, with this reefer and the sump, what you get with it is four 225 micron mesh bags, which for cleaning are really really good. Um, you know, you whip them out, you can do them in the sink, literally within a few minutes, they're back in again. Rinse with RO, they're back in again, and they're, they're like new. The trouble is with them, is that they do let through quite a bit of detritus. Um, you know, that's the downside to them. Uh, and you don't want detritus building up in the sump here, in the bottom, uh, and going into your, your biological media. So, you know, I want to just trap as much crap as possible, basically, to, to uh, it, you know, in this filter sock area. Now, I don't, I did the, the, um, the modification with the, the plastic beakers bought from Sainsbury's. They're the perfect size. Um, as you saw in the last update, I, uh, I put those in, I put filter floss actually in the cups. The trouble is with it, is that they overflow far too quickly. Um, and the other thing as well I noticed was that did you just can get enough flow through them. As many holes as I drilled in the bottom, um, you know, the more holes I put in around them, you, you still got to try to sort of seek, get through past the filter floss, because uh, you only put a thin layer in, otherwise you, you know, it would overflow too quick. Uh, you'd still get to try to come through the holes. Um, so I've reverted back to this big filter floss pad, you know, laid on top of the original 225 mesh bags. Um, this way, I, you know, I'm finding it's collecting, as you can see, it's collecting all the crap on the top of the pad. Um, what I do is, it, what I put a fresh pad in, it goes about halfway, then I switch the pad round so it collects it, otherwise it starts overflowing the other side. Um, and you can get about five days or so out of that. Um, and I'm really happy with the way that's going. The filter socks hardly need to be cleaned, which is a good sign that nothing's going through. Um, 
yeah, they stay really clean. I mean, obviously every few months you might want to rip them out and uh, clean them, but yeah, this method is, is working really well. It's what I'm going to stick to. The pads I'm using is um, from All Things Aquatic. It's just this large, I think it's two or three inch, um, that it's filter wall for, for ponds. And what I do is I half it, um, split it in half and then chop it to size and lay it straight in the filter stock tray. Everything else all going good. Skimmers calmed down a little bit. I'm off no pox now because I've got my nitrates down to 15. Annoyingly though, my phosphates are at zero. Um, so that's, you know, when you get your phosphates down to zero, no pox needs phosphate and nitrate uh, you know, present to bring to come down to zero. But once you hit zero on the phosphate, it seems to really struggle to get the, the, the nitrates down any lower. So that's where I am, I'm at a sort of full stop now. So what I do is I come off for the no-pox, let it build up. Hopefully the phosphate will sort of come up as well to, to equalize with it and we come back on with it and try and bring them both down to zero together. Um, yeah. So it's just a little quick update before uh, the new additions go in. If you're wondering what the sign says, it had to be done really. Because my fear is if I'm out and the wife has friends around or the kids have visitors, friends around, whatever, someone's bound to be uh, tempted to put their hand in the tank and um, jaws without a doubt will straight be healed by fingers straight away because he thinks it's food going in. Um, as with Pennywise, the clan triggers get big. They uh, got a nasty bite to them. So a very functional sign, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's just going to be a, a quick video this time, and uh, hopefully next week the new additions settle in well, and uh, we can do an upload and show you what we're going for. Don't forget, folks, um, hit the like, chuck a comment in the box below, and if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.